That should be crooked, right? Okay, hopefully that's better. Hi, what is up gays? It is Gabe and I am back with another video. So this is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time, like probably since I started my channel. But I kind of just wanted to wait until I had everything organized. Uh, I mean, I usually keep this tiny section of my room organized. But like, I don't know, I just wanted to wait until I had a few more pieces that I like really loved and wanted to show off. Yeah, this is my toy shelf collection video. So as you can see, I have a lot of toys. <laughs> I have always been a toy collector. When I was little, I would never play with my My Little Ponies or like my Care Bears and stuff. I would always just like put them in different places and like photograph them and like be like, I have this many brat dolls. <laughs> like I was always so like a big collector. I would say most of these toys I've gotten in the past three or four years and I have thrifted the majority of them, a couple of them are from antique stores, and some are gifts. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like looking at everything. So I wasn't really sure how I was going to film this video at first, because like, you know, do I film me talking, or do I film the toy shelf, or do I do both? So I feel like the best setup is I'm going to have some shots of the entire toy shelf, and I'm also going to take some toys down and talk about them, just a few of my favorites are like the rarest. So I have these categorized uh, a little bit. Up there where you can't see is mostly 80s. I, the majority of these are 80s because 80s toys were just amazing and so innovative. This shelf is basically just whatever cute things would fit up there. And then this shelf is all 80s except for these three in the front. Uh, I think this is the, this and this are the only modern toys on the shelf. These are all 80s or 80s inspired. <laughs> and uh, these right here are actually my pre-60s, 60s and before toys. And then at the very bottom, I just have some like miscellaneous Disney stuff. So why don't we just get started? Okay, first off, we have this large... 1983 Cheer Bear and this is so special to me because I believe two or three Christmases ago my best friend got it for me. She got it off eBay and like I was just so happy. Like I think I cried. Like it was just so sweet and I love the 80s ones because I love how like little creepy their eyes are and just like I love the designs and just how simple they are and the color blocking and she's just a sweetie. Like I love her. Okay, next thing, you probably understand why I like this. Uh, she's literally me. I get so much of my fashion inspiration from late 80s and early 90s Barbie. This is Troll Barbie. Troll, 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 troll Barbie. She's really into trolls. <laughs> this is Troll Barbie and I honestly didn't know she existed until about two years ago when I found her in a thrift store and I believe I paid like $15 for her uh, which is a lot for thrift store prices but it was totally worth it. I was on vacation in Wisconsin Dells and I just love her fashion. I have matching leggings and I have some troll earrings like she does and she's just so cool and I love her. I love the cover design and then the back it's really cool. I really loved all of the like brand deals that she would do in the 90s. Like she had some with Walmart, she had a bunch with Disney. They were all just so cute. And I wish she still did stuff like that. Like she's definitely my favorite Barbie of all time. Just kitschy, tacky, femme. We love it. Next is a, another style icon who I just got recently in a big bag of her and her friends. This is Betty Spaghetti. I swear to God, I own this same shirt, but the uh, shirt is orange and then the smiley face is yellow. Like, it's the exact same shirt. 
I I loved Betty Spaghetti growing up, but I never owned a Betty Spaghetti. I just had these Betty Spaghetti like paper dolls with like fashion cutouts, and I just thought her fashion was the most amazing thing ever. Like she's just so cool. Like down to her shoes and her skirt, and she's honestly my number one fashion inspiration. And I really do think I'm gonna get a tattoo of her someday. I just love her eye designs, everything about it is just amazing. I think I would get one that's like to scale like right here next to my Keith Haring tattoo and there goes her arm. <laughs> that's one thing about Betty Spaghetti's uh, their limbs don't stay on very well and if you're a toddler and you like to shake things uh, it's probably not the best toy for them. Um, but they, I also have her matching little dog right here which I just think is so cute. If you're really looking for some like 90s fashion inspo, you should totally look up some Betty Spaghetti and her like fashion designs. It's just amazing. Next we have our first troll and I am very picky about the trolls I collect. I really only get them if they have rainbow hair. I'm really looking for the rainbow rock and roll troll who has like a mohawk and then he has like rainbow wavy shaved sides. So I really like this one just because of how big it is. It's just so cool and I love how it's like the exact same as the smaller trolls. It's just bigger. Like I'm not like a huge fan of the soft body ones but if they're in really good condition I am. And this I actually got in an unclaimed freight store. I don't really know why it was there because it's definitely used but like I'm not complaining. Uh, He's a cutie. Next up are popples, and popples are some of my favorite vintage toys. I just love, they're very hard to come across, and that kind of like rarity just like is really cool to me. And I actually didn't know what they were until a few years ago. Like, I didn't grow up with them or anything. So they're like Care Bears, like quirky <laughs> cousin, you know? Even though Care Bears already have cousins. So this is a Popples piggy bank and I thrifted this myself. I believe all of my regular size Popples are thrifted by me and then my smaller ones like these except for one I got in a swap with this wonderful girl on Instagram and like I'm just, that swap was amazing. It was so great. This is probably the only non-vintage toy I will be showing today but I just they definitely capture the essence of the 80s and so I put them with my vintage toys because they are just so amazing. This is Pero Pero Sparkles. They are a Japanese art doll. They're plushies and they... Oh, they're so cute. I just love their huge anime eyes and just they're so cute. They're like perfect little like panda bear animals. <laughs> I just really love them. I would love some other ones in bigger sizes but they're really expensive so I only have one little one that I got on sale. Next this is well, it's definitely not the weirdest, but it's one of the weirdest toys that I have found. I found it over the summer, I believe, when I went antiquing with my mom. And it's this little alien. And I'm guessing by the colors and the patterns and stuff that it's early to mid-60s. Uh, but it does not have a date. It is actually a hand puppet. And I just love the colors. It was so like groovy to me and very unique. It kind of looks like those little like ant dolls. I forget what they're called from like the 90s. Uh, but it's older, more human predecessor. So yeah, I just thought this was super interesting. These technically aren't toys, but they are toy memorabilia. We have a party popple glass and we have a cheer bear glass from Pizza Hut and these are both from 83 I believe. Nope this is 86 and this is 83 and I actually got both of these when I went on like so <laughs> Uh, my old therapist, um, she would sometimes do like day trips with some of her patients just to like do fun stuff around the area and we went to one of my favorite antique stores that's actually closed down now and I got both of these and it's just it's a really cute memory. Okay now on to the more interesting pieces and I'm going to have a lot of stuff from the shelf because there's just so much to talk about them with that. Let's start off with this guy that I found at a swap meet. 
He is a primary colored part bear, part clown, and he is a rubber face where like the head is rubber and the body is a plush. And I am almost positive that this is handmade. Uh, my guess is 60s, 50s, 40s, anything like that. If, if you know anything about this, please let me know. I am not an expert. I just enjoy having them in my home. <laughs> I literally like this guy. <laughs> but the only thing is his head kind of isn't on the best. It's, you can kind of see the stitches. It's hand sewn. I believe and he's just you know your average little weirdo and he's a fan favorite next is these two and these are more rubber faces uh, this one actually I feel like all of these have such like fun like bittersweet memories attached to them this I actually got on one of my first dates with my first girlfriend when I was like I don't know, 13, 14, and I just thought she was super cute, and I really love how they have, like, the plush body and the rubber face, and just a month ago, I actually found her little boyfriend. They are from the same company, same brand, uh, same time period. Um, the only difference is that he still has his bow, and she does not, and they just make a really cute pair. This is another thing that I really have zero information on. Uh, by looking at it, I could say this really could be from the late 1800s to 1930s. I'm really not sure. I believe... I believe it might be handmade. I, I'm really not sure. Like, it could have been one of those projects that they used to have where it, you, it would give you all the material and then you sewed up the stuffed animal yourself and then it was kind of like you made it. It's like a craft project for kids. Um, but he... He's hanging in there. He is quite old. And uh, I tried... The only writing he has on him is his bow that says Ted... E bear and I really cannot tell I think because there's bleeding it's a very well written uh, handwritten uh, tag but it also could be from some kind of typewriter I am not sure and he's just mad interesting we have your classic squeaky toys this one has lost its squeaker but I know for a fact, or at least the last time I checked, this one hasn't. <laughs> These are from the 60s. I think my mom actually told me she used to have one like this when she was a little girl. This is probably the one of the weirdest and just most interesting dolls. Um, I got it at an antique store a while ago and <laughs> I checked and I believe she's from 1943 or 1946. She is a three-faced Trudy doll and as you can tell she has three faces. <laughs> um, <laughs> she has a crying face with a little chip between the eyes and a sleeping face. And this is just such a cool, interesting find for me. I just think, like, she's so cool. It, it's not very often you see something like this. Like, it has three faces. I usually keep it displayed like this because she kind of looks like a conjoined twin. And it's just, like, really cool. I don't know. And she has some damage, but I think that just makes her cooler. And I got to make sure her legs don't, like, knock together and break. Yeah. Ooh, I forgot. My two ladies. My leading ladies. So I love Furbies. Furbies are amazing, but I really only collect specific ones. I really only like the ones that are really cool colored, like checkered Furby and stuff like that, like the really special edition ones. I really, I remember <laughs> for the longest time I like had in my ISO on my Instagram a rainbow Furby, and then I found out that she doesn't actually exist, or actually one of her exists, and she is a prototype somewhere of a design from a Furby maker uh, sweepstakes thing that they did in the 90s where little kids would draw um, what Furby they wanted to see, and Rainbow Furby won, and for some reason they didn't actually go into production. So there's, there's one photo out there 
of one prototype and its whereabouts are unknown. So if you found that, I can't even imagine how much money it is. That's insane. I just want to see it found. It's like the, the holy grail of Furbies, literally. But without further ado, I <laughs> here is a Furby baby who is pink with yellow hair and I usually don't name my toys but I named her Pee Pee <laughs> just because I think it's funny uh, and she still has her original tag and she is a Furby baby and she doesn't work very well when I put batteries in she'll sometimes make a weird grinding noise and it kind of sounds like a monotone scream so that's pretty fun. I actually just found another one <laughs> who works slightly better than she does and I'm going to sell that one once I put it up uh, because I don't really care if they work or not because they are mostly just display pieces and I just like looking at them. So I might as well give the better condition one to someone who really appreciates it. And next we have the infamous Baja Blast. <laughs> like, I, it's so funny. I walked into the thrift store and I had a Baja Blast and I found her and the other PP and they're literally the exact same color. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> it's so cute. And so, yeah, her and PP are girlfriends. And it's honestly iconic. Like, they're just so cute together, and they both have their original tags. I don't think she works either. I Correct me if I'm wrong, editing me. I believe that's all of the ones I want to talk about uh, on this camera angle, so why don't we switch to my other shelf? We're just gonna do a <laughs> top to bottom view. These are my vintage hats and masks, but they're not really toys, so I won't talk about them that much. This one's not actually vintage, it's a recreation, but yeah. Uh, this is the first shelf. I keep my Troll Barbie and all of my Burger King uh, Simpsons dolls and all of these Care Bears that this girl at school actually gave me because she didn't want them, the little mini ones. Our little McDonald's toys. I really want more McDonald's toys, dude. My little rainbow troll that I use in all my intros. Betty Spaghetti. Papo. Pee Pee and Baja. <laughs> yep. And then we have some vintage Valentines and postcards. And this is actually a recreation. I found that out after I bought it of a vintage Halloween cutout, and then these are my Pride and Joy, these uh, McDonald's 70s uh, Valentine's. And then I've actually never heard of this brand until I found it. I just thought she was really cute. They're smushies, and she's in the packaging. I usually hang the things that I have in the packaging. And this is actually a My Little Pony knockoff from the 80s called Darlin' Dinos. And Sophie, who I did the bundle swap with, sent me a package of a bunch of vintage toys she didn't want. And this was one of them, and I had to keep it. It's just so funny to me. So here we have my Karis' Bears's and my Popple. And I believe she isn't vintage. She's from 2017, but I love Cynthia, so yeah. And we have a little boy, Pero Pero. There you are. <laughs> And then we have some more Karis' Bears's, and we have the Popple. These two are the world's smallest, like 2017 editions of Karis' Bears, and then this is a Target remake of a Gremlins toy from the 80s. And here is my pre-60s shelf. Everything is 60s or before, uh, to the best of my knowledge, except for this cup, which is from the early 70s. It's my favorite boy, the Hamburglar. And a lone Gudetama. <laughs> yeah, these are my babies. And then lastly, this is kind of just my miscellaneous shelf. I have these Goofy and Mickey piggy banks. And I have a Donald plush and a Donald piggy, ba piggy bank. And I believe these are all from the 60s. Okay, on to the next shelf. And if you know me, you probably know, I used to have all of my social media go by Cutie Cutie, and 
I <laughs> I was obsessed with cute bees and I still am I still really love them I did a school report on them but <laughs> these are my cute bees <laughs> I have I believe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one cupies. <laughs> and all of them are thrifted except for this one and this one. And they are all celluloid except for these two, which are bis. And I love these babies. I, I love the different sizes they come in, and I just think they're really cute, and I just really respect Rose O'Neill as a businesswoman, and she was very progressive. Um, Cupies actually started out off as suffragette comics. They would hold little signs that said, let our mothers vote. It was really cute. Okay, that is all for my toy shelf video. I hope you guys really enjoyed. This is just kind of like a niche thing that I enjoy. And I actually did this because I am planning on a room tour and I didn't want to spoil this video, so I thought I'd do it first. And hopefully I will have a room tour up soon because I know a lot of you guys been, have been asking. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys later.